Okay, um, ready for the next talk then? This is uh, Federico Frangrelli, uh, who's a C++ and Python developer at Evernova. Um, and he's going to talk about how to make a full-fledged REST API with Django and OAuth Toolkit. So, over to you. Thank you. Hi. Hi, everyone. So, the, the goal of this talk is to show you how to create a REST API protected with OAuth 2. But uh, first, I want to tell you how you should know how to do it. And I, I want to tell you a, a story. So uh, let me introduce you to this uh, small, uh, small and simple application, the Time Tracker, which is, of course, a web application that uh, tracks the, allows the users to, to track the time they spend on their activities. And at the beginning, at first, I had, one, I had to choose to pick one tool, which was Django, and I had one single big project, and I deployed it once, and everything was fine, more or less. But as he used to sing, the times they are changing. And what has changed? Actually, well, front-end front -end development has changed a lot. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, today we have uh, a lot of web, web front-end frameworks and that allows you to create amazing front-end uh, applications and they have their, their own development tools they, to build, to test, and to run the, applica the application. And so they are com completely separate applications. And ye, I also had to support multiple devices, uh, which means to support uh, different browsers and different platform. But you should, we, we should, I, I should also uh, take care of the um, native apl applications. So I ended up with a lot of projects. I had a time tracker backend, a uh, time tracker web, which is the front end, web front end application, then the Android uh, project, the iOS project, and the desktop application, you know, for the the old desk desktops. Uh, and moreover, uh, there are third-party services that wants to connect with my uh, time tracker application. They want to uh, send me data. They want to read data from my time tracker applications. So what happens in the backend application? Uh, What's in the backend application? There is a service that exposes an amazing and reliable REST API. And this is the recipe uh, Django, Django REST framework, and Django of Toolkit. The, the, these are the, the models. They are really, really simple. There is the activity and the time entry, which is the model that allows us to track the user. Uh, the time that a user spend on a, an activity or a task. And these are the endpoints that I want to create. Uh, yeah, on the mouse left column, uh, the URL, the, the, the HTTP method supported, and the semantic meaning of each method. So, for example, the first row, you have a slash API slash activities. If you send a get request, you'll get back a list of the available activities. Uh, to create the endpoint, I need you to, I'm, 
I need I need to show how Django REST framework uh, works in I hope in less than five minutes. So the first thing you have to do is to serialize your data, and this is really really straightforward in Django REST framework. You can use this base class serializer, and this works uh, just like Django forms. So you just define the fields you need and add some code to restore or create uh, the instance of the model from its serialized representation. And then you can use, easily use the serializer uh, and you'll get back uh, a dictionary representation of your object. Uh, of course, this is boilerplate code which should be repeated for uh, every model of your uh, application, but you can avoid to write that code using model serializer, uh, which allows you to just specify which, which is the model you are, uh, you are serializing, you want to serialize. Then we have to create the views, the endpoints, and what do we need? Uh, uh, we need, of course, to respect the uh, semantic meaning, and but we should take care of the user authentication, and also uh, we should take care of permission checks. Also, sometimes object level permissions. Uh, sometimes you need to paginate your endpoints because you get a lot of results, and also you want maybe to handle response and request formatting to support, for example, JSON, XML, YAML. So this is a lot of stuff, but you just keep calm and use Django REST framework because Django REST framework is really, uh, has a lot of settings that allows you to customize its behavior, its default behavior. These are just a uh, small example. Uh, the first one allows you to define which is the class uh, that takes care of the user authentication. And then we have the, the default permission class. So if you're not authenticated, you're, you won't get anything just for, for a one, for a three, sorry. Uh, and the default renderer and default parser for the formatting for the format. Uh, well, when you, to create the, the endpoint, you can use the API view based class provided by Django REST framework, uh, which allows you to add some code to the handler meters. And this class will use, this base class will use the uh, settings uh, we can see here to create to realize, to create an endpoint with the correct behavior, with the behavior you want. And, well, the, the code, it, it is really, really easy to understand. Here we have the query set to retrieve all the activities. We serialize the query set and return the serialized uh, response. And, of course, <laughs> This is boilerplate code, so you, you can, uh, you have to repeat this code, uh, 44 endpoints, but you can avoid, uh, to write this code using the generic class based view provided by Django REST framework. Uh, here you just need to specify with, uh, to set the, the, which is the base query set and the serializer class you want to use. Uh, there is also uh, a built-in browsable API uh, provided by Django REST framework, which we are going to see at the end of the talk. So uh, the next step is how do you authorize client applications? I mean, your, your applications like the time tracker uh, Android and the time tracker iOS, they need to authorize, they need to be authorized to talk to the time tracker backend API. And also, 
there are third party apps that want to access your user's data. So you need an authorization, uh, you need some authorization engine behind. Uh, if you don't have, uh, if you don't have this, um, authorization engine, these are the problems we, you're going to, to face. First of all, you have to store the first solution without the authorization framework is to store the user password in the application, which is not good, of course, uh, because the application gets a, full, gets a full access to the user account. And if the, users, if the user wants to revoke his password, it wants to revoke the access, sorry, to the application, he needs to change his password. So, comp also compromised apps can expose the user, uh, the user password and, uh, and username. This is the solution, uh, the OAuth2 authorization framework. So, how does it, how does it work? And I want to explain uh, how it works using this simple use case. So imagine that there is a Songify streaming, music streaming service that wants to connect with the time tracker application. Uh, so uh, their users can uh, track their listening activities on the time tracker application. These are the actors. Um, this terminology is, uh, is the same used in the RFC, uh, in the all to RFC, and I'm just trying to translate these terms to the, to, to this use case. So the resource owner is of course the owner, the resource server is the time tracker a API and the authorization server in this case is the same as the results server, and the client is the Songify application. I want to explain you what the out to authorization framework defines four uh, flows, four authorization flows. I want to show you how mm, one of these flows work. This is the most popular one, uh, the authorization code flow. So the first step is when the client registers with the authorization server and the authorization server provides a client, provides a client ID and a client secret. Uh, the client, of course, is the Songify application. So there is someone at Songify that, for example, goes to developer.timetracker.com, add a developer application, and it gets back a client ID and a client secret key. The second step uh, is when the Songify application redirect the user to the time tracker application via its user agent, uh, via its browser, for, for instance. And next, the time tracker application authenticates the user and obtains the authorization to communicate with the Songify application from the user. Now, the time tracker, the time tracker application redirects the user back to the Songify application with an authorization code which is later exchanged uh, for a token. And the token can be used by the client to authenticate uh, requests. Uh, how to do that in Django? With Django, our toolkit, of course, which supports Django from 1.4 to 1.7, Python 2 and Python 3, and it is built on top of Outlib, uh, which actually is a really great library. It takes care of the uh, compliance with the 
RFC. We just wrote some glue code. Uh, and its integration with Django is really, really easy. You add uh, the how to provide an application to the installed apps, add uh, our, or our URLs to the, your patterns, and you can create a protected endpoint using our generic protected resource view. And here you have an API, an endpoint, which is protected with OAuth 2. Now, uh, it comes but with batteries included. So we have a built-in views to, sorry, to register, to register developer apps and a form view for the user, author for the user authorization. Uh, it is integrated with Django REST framework you just need to switch the default authentication classes with the one provided by uh, Django or Toolkit package. And now I want to show you how, how it works. So uh, these are the steps. Uh, we are going to the authorization. First, we are going to create a developer application that we are going we, we are going to simulate the, uh, the step when the user is uh, uh, redirected to the authorization endpoint. So here you can see this is uh, one of the built-in views uh, to register new developer applications. So you create new application, you add the name, here you have your client ID and client secret, you can choose, these are details from the how to, uh, from the how to framework. Uh, anyway, I got my Songify application ready. Here it is, so uh, we can just use this one to Step one, the Songify application is redirecting the user agent of the user uh, to the authorization uh, form, but first the user has to authenticate. And now uh, time, the, the application is asking for my authorization and we authorize of course. Come on. Okay. Of course, this should be the URL of the client application, so songify.com, for example. Now we can take this authorization code, just substitute the code here, and we are going to exchange the code to obtain a token. Here is the response, and this is the token. And the token can be used to, to create uh, a proper request with this header, authorization bearer with the token. So I just want to show you that I'm not lying. If I try to get the list of the activities, just tell me that uh, I'm missing the authentications credential. Credential. Now, if I use my new token, I can get back the the list of the activities. So, and that's all. The, Future plans for Django Toolkit are to support OAuth 1, maybe add support for the OpenID connector RFC, which I really don't know. I still have to read the, the paper. And uh, add no secure storage, storage support for, for the, the application's storage. So we need some help, and thank you. That's all.
Any questions, please? Anyone? Okay. Uh, first, thank you for your talk. Thanks. My question is, can we use the same framework to post tweets on Twitter? No, uh, Django Toolkit actually is the implementation of the server-side part of the out to uh, uh, specification. So um, if you want to uh, uh, send tweet to Twitter, you need the uh, a client-side implementation of the out to uh, RFC, the auto authorization framework. Um, in your in your examples, the um, authorization server was always the same as the actual service. Uh, with your toolkit, can you make two services? Like, can you separate out the authorization part? Uh, actually, no, we have to work to keep the resource server and the authorization server separated, yes. Uh, but maybe um, y you can. Actually, you have to write some more code to keep the authorization server and the resource server uh, separated. Hi. So Hi. just... Uh, one quick question is, um, so if you want to um, expose your API differently, your resources differently from the actual model definition, can you simply handle that in the serializer class so you don't have to use the... The Django or... Yeah, the model serializer. Yes, of course. You just use serializer. Just if, 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 you, if your data is, for example, MongoDB, you just write your... Uh, you just use the serializer based class to write your own serializer, and it just works. You have to write some more code, but it works. It is okay. Okay, thanks. You're welcome. Hello, Hi. thanks for your talk. Um, what are you using for object ownership? Sorry? Object ownership. So the, um, how do you say this object belongs to this user, and I only show to this um, request coming from this user? Oh, um, well, this is uh, object level permission. Oh, well. But you are using any component for that? Uh, we are just filtering the, the query set, uh, looking at the, well, actually, okay, we, sometimes you, we, we can get back, which is the user, uh, bound to the token, okay? And with, that, with the user instance, you can filter the query set. Uh, this is a solution, really simple solution. Yeah. Okay. Any more questions? Okay, thank you very much. Thank you.